Uh, did, did you, you communicate, communicate with, with my son also? Yes. I am actually uh, going to interview him after you. Oh, oh it's not at the same time. It's not at well, oh, okay. everybody has their own time. <laughs> um, I have to say that I'm, I'm more than thrilled. Uh, you are one of my favorite authors of all time. And I can honestly say I've been a book critic and I've read thousands of books. And uh, I always come back to your books. I, um, I even, it almost enforce the people that I coach to read your books. Uh, I, I find they're profound and uh, my dream is to, to master this art of living according to the Toltec agreements. So it is with uh, a lot of uh, humility and gratefulness that uh, I thank you for, uh, for taking the time to talk with me. And I have hours of questions, but I, sure, I, will, sure. <laughs> I will try to, to do my best to at least this first time to not, of course, take too much of your time. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Well, my first, um, my, the first thing I would ask you is perhaps to introduce yourself to people that maybe do not know yet who you are, do not have mm -hmm. that privilege, that, uh, that, that amazing opportunity, uh, because as you know, this will also be translated to the French population. And mm -hmm. um, yes, because we have something in common, you and I, we, we have uh, books from the same uh, edi uh, editor and publisher mm -hmm. in France. In France, so, yeah. Yes, so, uh, so I'm doing this both in English and French. Uh, oh. to reach as many people as possible. Uh, oh, so, so if someone doesn't know who you are, how would you s describe yourself to them? Okay, well, uh, I'm an artist like everybody else, like seven billion people on this planet. And as an artist, I always create. I create all the time, just like everybody else. But I'm completely aware of my creation because every single thing that I do in life is creation. Then my whole life is about creating uh, and sharing what I create. In that case, it's messages. It's about what I think, my philosophy, etc. Then <clears throat> I become a medical doctor. I've been a surgeon for a long time. And and finally, by the end of the uh, middle of the 80s, last century, I decided not to practice medicine anymore. And I focused my attention into understanding how the human mind works. Then I became a shaman for around 10 years. I follow my uh, family tradition, which is uh, what we call the Toltec knowledge. And by the way, Toltec means artist. Then when I talk about artists, I talk, I'm talking about Toltec also. Then after 10 years of practicing with a lot of people, I travel so, in so many places, the result was uh, all the books that I wrote. And mainly the, the first one, the, the, which is the Four Agreements. That is a book that is being translated into the six different languages. And it was in the New York Times bestseller for more than seven years. And well, and all my books have already been translated in all those different languages. Then I am traveling all around the world. In 2002, I had a major heart attack. I was nine weeks in coma. Wow. I had greatest experience during the, the heart attack and the coma. And after I came back from the coma, uh, my doctors tell me that I only live with the 16% of my heart capacity. Wow. And that I couldn't live more than one year, maybe if I'm lucky, two years. And it passed eight and a half years and I didn't die. Then I decided to have a heart transplant. Wow. And, I had a heart, and I had a heart transplant in October 9, 2010. Wow, that's fabulous. <laughs> then after six months, when I recover, and the doctors tell me that I can start doing my work, 
I shall travel in and thrive the best I can. That is fabulous. I, I, I'm astonished. Your work as a, as a surgeon must have, how did it influence your, your, the other part of your life or how does that being combined? It's so fabulous to come from a scientific perspective and now mm -hmm. create totally as a, as a true art. Well, you were an artist from the time you were born, but in such a different perspective of art. Well, I guess that everything is really art. You know, medicine is art also. Yes. And, you know, at a certain point, I was working with Thomas Roberts when he's a neurosurgeon, and there was an oncology surgeon, then I was part of their team. Which means that I, I did a surgery of, it, of the brain and the spine. I was so into the nerve system, but it was really not enough for me because I want to understand the human mind, not just the anatomy of the body and to, to make that kind of healing. Because for sure I knew that the problem, the real problem is in the mind. And of course there are many other surgeons, there are other doctors that they can do uh, what I was doing. But in the mind, you know, I saw that uh, psychology was way behind. We started believing in Freud and all those people that lived uh, more than a century ago. And it was time to, to change the image and to change the study of uh, psychology. Then you can see that all my books are really psychology books, but I don't explain what's ego, super ego, etc., etc. No, it's just tools that we can use in order to change ourselves, that we become our own therapist. We become our own uh, psychologist, our own psychiatrist, and we can heal ourselves. I just give the tools and everybody can use it in their own way because I really don't know what they have in their mind, only they know. But the tools are the same for, every, for everyone because it's nothing but common sense. Yes, I do agree. and. But I think you bring it, like my belief is that you bring it to, to a different level or a different perspective that might enlighten us in a different way. Sometimes just the fact that it, and it empowers people, I believe, in a different way to see that if, we, if this is all uh, a belief or a dream or a perspective, just a, a way of seeing, like I, I'm totally with you because I, I've been now uh, studying more and more the process of the of the mind of the brain how the brain how we can change actually mm -hmm. our, our perspective and how that influences our future just because of the way the brain functions so I totally agree with you my my dream or goal is to to link the two together so that people can understand those that are that believe they don't believe can, can have more a scientific kind of belief and those that are that are truly more spiritual can understand that it is also pro proven now more and more mathematically or scientifically that we have so much power in ourselves. Um, so I, I find it's, it's fabulous what you write because it, it does empower people in taking that um, taking their lives into their own hands and not being depending on the beliefs of others. <clears throat> yes, one of the things that I'm doing right now, uh, all around the world, because I'm traveling a lot, is asking for help. And the help that I ask is to please help me to change the world. And I'm not talking about humanity, but the world that we create, our own world. The world that no one can change but us, because only you can change your world. And only you know how. But if you change your world in your way, the result will be amazing because it's just like magic. Everything around you will change. Then can you imagine that everybody start changing their own world? Where humanity will go from that point? Well, it's not just a dream. The solution is right there. We are responsible for our own creation. Then we don't have to change the entire planet Earth. We just need to change our own world. And if everybody do the same thing, wow, I you can see a great future in humanity. I totally agree. Uh, this is my entire life is, is about that. So I totally agree with you. Uh, 
100. Uh, thank God there's many of us that, that feel the same way and that are working towards that. And I, I believe more and more people there, I find a lot of people come to me with, uh, actually it's one of my questions, comes to me with, with a negative approach of life and say, well, mm -hmm. You know, the world is going worse and worse, and I absolutely don't see it like that. I see more and more of us are coming out enlightened, trying to awake others, trying to enlighten others, and bringing that, that spirit of peace, the, the spirit of true um, inner, inner greatness that, you, that mm -hmm. we have all the power to bring out. But what would you give as an advice if someone would come to you and come from a place of of dismay come from a place of despair because I I unfortunately meet a lot of people that come from that place and that I know it's it's difficult to solve issue in you know in a blink of an eye but what advice would you give that person? Well it's extremely simple. The way they see the world is the way they create their personal world. Mm -hmm. And that's what they project, all those fear. But this is their creation, that great artist. Even if they see something horrible, terrible, it still is art. But they do it without the awareness. They are not aware that this is their creation. Then the way, the only way just to reflect to them and say, look, this is your creation. This is how you see the world. But there's different ways to see the world. You know, this is just a point of view, and perhaps it's a point of view of a victim. Then you can create your own world, either as a victim or as a hero. If you create your world as a victim, you, you that, that world will be overwhelmed, and you will, uh, you will feel powerless into your own creation. But on the other hand, if you see your own world as the hero, you will see that all the events that are happening, that really challenge, it's a challenge for you to overcome. And yes, you are strong enough to overcome whatever life brings to you. Because there's events that are happening all the time in any place. What is important is our reaction about whatever is happening. Then if we react as heroes, we will find out that yes, in every, uh, the experience that you have you becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and you don't see your own creation as overwhelming. Then if they just have that idea, they can change the way they see the world and they change the their own world and the point of view will change completely. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, I actually uh, I've lived both sides. I can say that I've come from deep darkness before I saw great light. So I guess I ha I'm, 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 uh, I, I'm gifted or at least I have the chance of having seen how much we can go into being a vic feeling a victim or going into darkness and then switching but like a light switch mm -hmm. and being able to transform our lives uh, magically. I, I, li I, I believe yeah. you do too but after a while, we live in a constant kind of magic where, where it seems mm. like miracles are part of the daily life. And so a lot of people tell me, well, it's easy for you, but it is not. It is a choice. And that's why I'm so grateful that you say that, that actually people do have, they, they have their own power to transform mm -hmm. a nightmare into a dream. And, and it's all within, just as you say, just a, a matter of perspective, of changing. And the brain will accommodate to what we decide to give our attention to, correct? So mm -hmm. it's m m really a, it's, it's a simple little switch of focus. Is that, that's what I believe. And as soon mm -hmm. as we switch that little bit of attention, we, we, can, we can create something different. And I, I, I want to ask you uh, because I find the people I meet the most difficult time they have is to accept responsibility because before no. we can say I'm not a victim I have the power but there is a choice there to make is to say then it means I am responsible for everything so mm -hmm. how would you 
uh, how would you help people change that belief and know they're responsible for everything in their life? Well, that's exactly the reason why I wrote this uh, oral agreements and live it with my middle son that we have been with. Because they're the tools how they can change exactly that point of view. That you see, be impeccable with the world, with the world. <coughs> that means that if you use the, the, the world correctly, you create your personal heaven. If you misuse the world, you create your personal hell. It's that simple. How you use the world. Then when I say be impeccable with the world, it's because if you use the world impeccably, your life will be a paradise. Then don't take anything personally. Well, you know, events happen all around. There's all the opinions, all the judgments around. If you agree with all those uh, judgments, then that's the way you're going to judge yourself and you do that because you take it personally. As soon as you don't take it personally, you just don't believe all those judgments and opinions they have about you and that give you immunity in the interaction that you have with everyone. Don't make assumptions. It's about the relationship that you have with yourself because your, uh, your knowledge, your belief system have a voice, a voice that no one can hear but you and we call it thinking. You start thinking and thinking and thinking and make a lot of uh, 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 assumptions and, and when the truth can arise, then you find that all those assumptions that you made were completely false, but you was being worried for nothing, really. Then not make assumptions, give you immunity with the interaction that you have with yourself. And the, four, the agreement number four, this is the one I like the most, always do your best. Because you can have millions of ideas, but if you don't take action, none of those ideas will be manifested. Then we are doers. And this is how we create all the civilizations that exist in the planet Earth. Since the Egyptians, the Sumerians, the Greeks, the Romans, etc. First exists in our mind, and with the action we make it real. And now we have airplanes, we have computers, we have all that exists first in the mind. And we are the ones who make it real. Definitely. And so, I, I love mm -hmm. that fourth agreement. And I, I need to say, I'm a, sometimes an overdoer. I've, I've, um, I've learned to, to, to after reading your book especially, it was not to be busy, but to do better. To, 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 because doing, be, doing uh, our best is mm -hmm. not to overdo, but to do our best in everything we do also, to do it the best we can. And I, I was talking to a lady I'm coaching yesterday, telling her that exactly, I was quoting you, and I said, well, you know, you need to, to do things but every day, to finish the day, ask yourself, did I do my best today yeah. in everything? So, and, and I love that one. I love actually the four agreements. I try my best to, <laughs> <laughs> to live, to abide yeah. to them. I, I want, I'm, a, I'm a peaceful warrior wannabe. I, I <laughs> so I tend to, you know, try to manifest miracles in my life and in that sense, I do people often uh, become? It's also in the uh, in the thought of staying victim is waiting for things to happen, but mm -hmm. taking control is also the doing and the doing our best, meaning to mm -hmm. always be in the capacity of. Maybe the tough part I would say is when does one know uh, that he has done his best mm -hmm. or her best? How would you say that someone can know? Okay, I've done enough, or should I do a little more today or to him or her? You know, this is whatever his or her passion is. If he if he or she wants to do more and feel that they have to then they will. Mm -hmm. Only they know exactly at at one moment they should stop or not. So there is because the artist is different. Yeah, it's more of an intuition or a feeling of knowing personally. I, I say to people that when you don't do your best, it has a, a horrific effect of pers 
per belief of guilt. Mm -hmm. And the belief of guilt kills the self-esteem, the belief that we deserve what we're going to get. So if we don't do our best, we feel ah. we don't deserve what we're, have, we're hoping to have. And chances are we won't receive what we're hoping to have because we don't feel we deserve. So I, I, I love your book. Uh, one of them, I read, I read the others as well. Um, the one about love, I really love. Uh, it has changed my entire conception of relationship mm -hmm. totally. Uh, when I when I have a, a possible argument with someone, I, I go back to your sayings and I see, I almost see now people that I had difficulty dealing with as children almost. Mm -hmm. I talked with, from my children uh, to their children heart. Mm -hmm. to, to get rid of all that, that hurt that, as you say, the skin that is awful with, with mm -hmm. you know, with uh, so much pain and try not to hurt the person, not to touch the pain part and, and try to avoid being touched on my, <laughs> on my you know, hurts so that we have a, a heart to heart conversation. So I love all your books. I would like the people to know uh, what is next what's coming up in, in the future with you, uh, what they can expect, where they can find you and everything so that more people get in touch with, with your teachings. Well, um, I go back to Europe very soon. I go back to Glasgow, to London, to Tuscany. And later this, this year also, I will go back to France, to, I think to Switzerland, to Czech Republic in uh, Belgium. Then in, in France, there's a place that we call the Valley of Consolation, very close to Besançon. And of course, it's a monastery and it's a, there's a beautiful river with cascades. And I will do a retreat once a year there, oh, wow. like a five, six, year, six days retreat that they can, they can uh, come with me and really learn directly from me. That's fabulous. Well, they will find uh, where this video is airing. They will find, mm -hmm. I will copy and paste all the information so that people can easily click, find the links, find you and what you're doing, keep in touch with you, whatever, wherever you are in the world and be able to meet with you. I hope I meet with you in person. It would be one of my dreams come true. Then just take the action. Yes, take the action. And I, I, uh, the amazing, I, I have to say this, this year of mine has been my, my best year so far. So I know that, you know, there is no limits to, to what, what to expect from, from me. And it's, it's more now a, um, a belief of getting it into the time frame more than taking action. So we will meet in the very near future. I will be more than grateful to spend more time with you, hopefully interview you again on other subjects, other topics. Hopefully I will receive questions from viewers, listeners, my followers, so that next time I can ask you other insights and profoundly um, inspiring thoughts from you. Yes, yes, let me know if we find the right time and let's do it again. Yes, thank you so much. I, you yes. will have no idea how much it touches my heart. To have all my love and give all my love to whoever is look as hear us or listen to us. I will. Thank you so much, and may you be blessed. Thank you. And God bless you. Thank you. Bye bye.